Hi there, this is David, and welcome to my latest Let's Play, Wild Arms 5. Wild Arms 5 is probably my second favorite Wild Arms game. I would say that Wild Arms 4 is my first, but I cannot sing the praises of Wild Arms 5 enough. Are you looking for a game that has a fully realized world map, not just some point-and-click bullcrap? Um, it's a world map in the same vein as Dragon Quest VIII, if you've ever played that, with all sorts of hidden secrets and treasures and everything else on it. Um, it has the hex battle system has come back, so it's not just your regular, you know, turn-based battle system. Um, it's really nice, really strategic, and you also have classes and characters, and the classes are actually, you know, halfway decent. Yeah, there are some crappy ones that here and there, but for the most part, they all have their uses. This game is also much, much longer than its predecessor, uh, clocking in at about 50 to 60 hours, uh, so it gives you a real good bang for the buck. Um, and there's only some stupid dialogue. I know that the Wild Arms series is famous for its ridiculously retarded dialogue, but there's only some here, unlike Wild Arms 4 or XF, where it's just kind of ridiculous. Uh, it has a lot of puzzles and tons of past references to the series. This is pretty much like their 10th anniversary. So, let's go ahead and get started with Wild Arms 5. Let's see, get on out of here, new game. There's only a couple things that I'm going to want to change around in the um, little tutorial thing. Let's see, basically just making those cameras inverse and go ahead and let's get started. Oh, masters and slaves, holy crap. So, if the guy is still a shithole, sounds par for the course. Huh. Somebody shooting those birds? Oh my god, that accent. Seriously? That's not a southern accent, that's just fake and retarded. <laughs> Doesn't he ever get tired of that? I've never seen him hit anything. Not once. Well, this is his story. To me, that's kind of a knockoff of uh, Final Fantasy X, where they're like, you know, this is Titus's story. This is my story. And this is Dean's story. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with your story in Wild Arms 5. Hey. Wait, and we already have a ruin to go into. Nice! What are we, ruins chasers in this? No, that's Lufia. Wrong game, wrong series. Alright, time to dig! No small fry for me today. This time I'm gonna bring home the big one. I've never seen someone so excited about manual labor before in my life. He's like, all right, yeah, I get to go dig a trench and do slave labor. This is wonderful. I can't wait. Anyway, let's keep on going. Over here, there's a switch, and it just talks about, you know, using the right analog switch, uh, the right, get on the damn switch, the right analog stick to move the camera around. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory if you've ever played any kind of 3D game. And then here we have little pieces of Gela. Each one of those is worth one Gela, which is essentially your gold in this game. And you could follow the Gela trail right there if you want to, but I don't. Uh, we just want to keep on going this way to get some treasure. You can jump around and you can slide as well. Okay, we've got a break gem, well, two break gems, and some heal berries. Nice! The break gem is essentially your earth magic casting item. And the heal berries um, are essentially your basic healing item. Um, so, yeah. And you still can't buy heal berries, unfortunately. But they actually do grow on trees, so that's pretty nice. Anyway, you can push or pull this block, which is really nice. I hate when there's a block puzzles, and you can only push, and it turns into like this like god-awful number-sliding puzzle. Did any of you guys used to do those things whenever you were kids? Like those little, you know, you know those little number slider things that you would get in like the little party bags or whatever? And it could only go like one way? Those things are a pain in the damn ass. But, um, 
Yeah, now you can push and pull, so that's really nice. Basically, that's just talking about the little route markers. You can hit select and you can turn them off or on. If it's blue, it's an area that um, that you need to go to. If it is, where is it? Red, it's an area that you just came back from. And if it's yellow, it's an area that you've been to before. Okay, it's our, this is talking about sliding. Basically what it's saying is you can slide into these blocks and um, knock them on down. So let's do it. Oh, hey, it's a notebook. Yeah, what's going on here? A honey-bosomed maiden. Okay, sure. Yeah, seriously. Oh, it's some girl Rebecca's. Okay. Oh, okay. Nah, yeah. We're gonna have to bring it back to her. Huh, his Nightburn picture. I wonder who Nightburn is. I'm sure it's not important at all. Anyway, let's keep on moving and grooving right along. So in here, we have little sparklies all over the floor that we need to uh, dig up. So let's just start over here in the corner and let's get moving. Get over there and dig. Ooh, we get a water crystal. Nice. Yeah, uh, couldn't hurt to use. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, not pay dirt, just dirt. Ooh, we get one whole gold. Woohoo! Uh, let's go over here. What do we have? Oh. Nothing. Yeah. Okay, well, what about this area? Ooh, 50 gold! Nice! Yeah, that's awesome! I always need some spending money. Couldn't come in handy. What do we got here? Oh, wow! A golem heart! Cool! Huh. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Okay, so Old Man Tony. Huh. Hey, hey, and we get the golem heart, and we have to bring it back to the village to Old Man Tony. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, head on back there. Huh, I wonder what's in this door. Huh. Well, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm sure that that's not important at all. Anyway, um, I'm going to head on back to the village and meet you there. Okay, I'm outside. Um, it's very simple. If you get lost on your way out, there's an issue. Oh, well, he seems excited. Look what I found! Check it out! See? It's the real thing this time, I know it! Well, quite a feisty one we've got here, and just who might you be, lad? Uh, come on, it's me, Dean. Quit joking around! Eh, good to see you so lively, Dean. So you went to those old ruins again, did you? How did it go this time? Great, this one's the real deal. I'm sure of it! Here, take a look! Alright, no need to make a fuss over it. Let's see. Well... So, what do you think? I really found one this time, didn't I? Indeed, it seems you have. It's a bit damaged, but there's no question it's part of a golem. I'll give you my word as the world's finest golem engineer. Those ruins have been practically stripped bare, you know. I'm impressed you managed to find anything in there. Really? Awesome. I can't believe it's the real thing. I finally did it. Thanks, Tony. This is exactly what I needed. Needed? What kind of mischief are you cooking up this time? Sorry, that's a secret. Anyway, do you know where Rebecca is? I've got something for her. Rebecca? I think I saw her over by the bridge. Great, thanks. See you later. So as far as talking to the people, I'm going to voice, like, main dialogue. But, um, townsfolk, everything else? No, it's not going to happen. So, whenever Old Man Tony gets upset, he cleaves cars in two? Seriously? That's kind of, uh, insane. Secret Police Chief? Holy crap, what are you, like, one of Hitler's youth? My god, you're like those neighbor's kids in, uh, 1984. Whoa, holy crap, Olas. Can go over here and we can, uh, check this out. Huh, a bicycle? Yeah, it's kind of odd. They seem to have a mixture of old and new technology. They got cars and bikes going around, but they live in, like, these huts with straw roofs. Kind of strange. Anyway, talk to her, and, uh, she gives you something. I'm kind of going a little bit fast, but pretty much, she gives you a Gell card. Nice! And it doubles the amount of money that you normally get whenever you defeat a monster. So, apparently, she used to be a drifter when she was a, uh, child. So, huh, who knew? And the shop isn't open quite yet, so that kind of sucks. Over here we have our memory bird, and he gives us a pamphlet. I don't know how a bird gives us a pamphlet, but whatever. Anyway, you, you can talk to him, 
you can save, he'll heal you up, and you can also get a hint uh, as far as, you know, what you're supposed to do next. This was like the precursor to party chat, I guess. So, basically, we gotta find Rebecca. Well, I can do that. We can't save anywhere, though. Talk to this guy. And he blows his train whistle at you. <laughs> get off my lawn! Yeah. Poor guy. As I plow his fields even more. Hey. Oh, Deany? <laughs> hey, Deany. <laughs> You're only 16, still a boy. Yeah. Uh, normally in JRPGs, whenever you're 16, you're like a man, and you're ready to roll, and you're, you know, you, uh, you're, you're a seasoned war veteran. But in this game, I guess 16 is, uh, still a child. And then there's this bird here who's yearning for something. Hmm. I don't know about that. But you can go behind him, and you can look at his Nightburn poster. So, huh, that's who Nightburn is. Yeah. Looks kind of cool, I guess. Anyway, let's get on out of here. I mean, he's 16, still a child, but he has his own home, and his home is, like, bigger than anybody else's home in here. It has two rooms. So, eh, can't fault him for that. Oh, awesome. Huh. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you really should eat your vegetables. I love vegetables. I eat salads all the time. I probably have, like... I would say at least one salad a day, if not more. There are many times that I'll have, like, two salads a day and, like, yogurt or something for breakfast, and then a salad for lunch and a salad for dinner, and that's it. That's all I'll have. I mean, I love salads. Oh, really? Huh. So Capo Bronco's where we are, and it's the most remote town in all of Filgaia. Yeah. You know, God forbid an RPG hero starts, you know, in the main capital or in the middle of the world, or where there's, um, you know, tons of really hard monsters. We always have to start over here where there's, like, nothing going on. So, anyway, here's Rebecca. Let's give her a whirl. Ah, Dean! Have you seen my... What are you looking for? Um, nothing. Never mind. Oh. Do you mean this? What the? My poetry journal! How did you get a hold of this? Um, you didn't. Don't tell me you read it. Uh, well, uh, I found it down in the ruins, and I didn't know it was yours, so, uh... Rebecca. It's a good thing I stumbled on it. I'm heading out now, so I'll uh, see you around. But I thought you just got back. So where are you off to now? I was thinking of heading over towards Celestial Peak. What for? Why go way out there? Well, I wanted to go back one more time. You know, to say goodbye. Actually, I guess I'd better tell you, too. Hey, would you mind coming out there with me? Um, I guess so. After all, I owe you for the journal. Sure, I'll tag along. I haven't been out that far in a while, all the way to Celestial Peak. I hope you remember the way, Dean. Remember how I said that there's only some stupid dialogue? Yeah, we just witnessed some stupid dialogue. For the most part, the dialogue isn't that stupid, but yeah, that was really dumb. Also, something about Rebecca. I don't know, I'm gonna age myself right now. Do y'all remember that show? It was on like Nickelodeon or something in the 80s. It was called You Can't Do That on Television. 
and there was a mother on there, and she always wore rubber gloves no matter what she was doing. She was like at the grocery store shop and she was wearing rubber gloves. Rebecca's gloves remind me so much of that woman. Um, it's just, every time I see her, I just, I, I haven't seen that show in, God, 25 plus years? And it just brings me right back to it. It's just the rubber gloves wearing lady. So anyway, we're heading out of Capo Branca, but if you go back a little tiny bit, you can see these trees right here. And if you examine them, they are berry trees. And after about an hour has passed, the berry trees will bear fruit. And there's various berry trees. There's heel berry trees and potion berry trees and mega berry trees and even level apple trees. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And right now we can't pick anything from them, but they're there, keep it in mind. And as your internal time clock goes, then um, they will like periodically respawn more fruit. So anyway, let's uh, keep on going. This is the world map that I was talking about. It's pretty uh, expansive if you look at it. There's like, waterfalls and everything else going on there. There's this like weirdo, I don't know, island, Stonehenge, something or other there. But that's not where we're headed to right now. We're headed towards Celestial Peak. Also. There is a search system in this game, which is highly annoying and obnoxious. Just take a gander. Let's take a little look-see. See anything? Yeah, it's annoying. Over there. And if you have to do that to find stuff all throughout the entire game, that's going to get real old, real annoying, real fast. So, my way of kind of remedying that situation is because, you know, I do want the treasures. I need to get the treasure chests. But no one wants to listen to that crap. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to find all that crap off screen once I get something called the field viewer, which will be pretty soon, actually. And then I'm going to stick it into the end slate and show you exactly where I am on the world map and uh, what the coordinates are and what is in the treasures. That way you don't have to see me running aimlessly all throughout the world map uh, trying to find all these treasures, getting lost, blah, 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 and then listening to him, let's get a little look-see. Uh, no, that's ridiculous. So, I figured I'd save you guys that. Okay, yeah. Twists and turny paths, so keep an eye on this dungeon viewer as we go. Okay, awesome, what do we got? Sweet. Okay, press the start button to view the dungeon viewer, and you can just change pages using the L and the R button. So, let's check it out. Let's look at the map. Yeah, let's look at it. So here we have the various uh, areas. They're numbered, so right now we're in area 1, and then 2, and then 3, and so forth. And if you want to look at the entire dungeon, you could just flip through the map using the L or the R buttons. So that's pretty handy, pretty nice. It doesn't tell you where treasures are or anything like that, unfortunately. But it's okay. But anyway, next time, let's play Wild Arms 5. We're going to go exploring Celestial Peak. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.